how do we determine residential status of companies which is an important topic for our ca finals all right so companies determination of residential status is determined on the basis of two criteria number one all indian companies are always resident in india so if you are an indian company then you don't need to check anything else you are a resident in india all right so indian companies are always resident in india and what is the other criteria if you are a foreign company then then you need to check whether your place of effective management in india that means the second criteria is applicable only for foreign companies a foreign company will become an indian resident if their place of effective management is in india so now it's our duty to understand what exactly is the place of effective management concept so we can summarize this please make a note of this determination of residential status of companies this can be we can split this into two if you are an indian company then always resident in india always resident in india all right and for other companies that means if you are a foreign company you will deem to be a resident in india if place of effective management is in india so for other companies your determination of residential status is based on your place of effective management so now let's understand how to determine this place of effective management before that what do you mean by place of effective management any idea place of effective management p o e m so please make a note place of effective management simply means what the place where key management and commercial decisions are made so please make a note of it place of effective management means the place where key commercial or key management and commercial decisions are made key management and commercial decisions are made now for determining poem what is poem place of effective management there are certain guideline given by institute of not institute sorry central board of direct taxes all right so let's understand which all are the guidelines so friends please listen what do you mean by guideline guideline means simple tips or some advices given by cbdt while determining place of effective management so before explaining this guideline let me make this very clear this is only a guideline not a conclusive or an exhaustive step to determine poem this can be used as a tool or as a helping aid while determining poem in all permutation combination you cannot determine poem by making use of this guideline which we are about to discuss this is not an exhaustive list this is only a helping what do you say a helping aid just an assistance while determining poem so please write guiding principles for determination of poem it's actually cbdt circular so let's understand what exactly are the guiding principles for determining poem under that step number 1 write check whether a company's active business check whether a company's active business is outside india outside india we will call it as a b o i test so friends what is a b o i active business outside india so before determining place of active management the first thing that you need to check is whether a company's active business if it is outside india so how do you determine active business outside india so let's write it down a company shall be deemed to be engaged in active business outside india if all the conditions are satisfied 
So if a company satisfies all the conditions which we are about to explain, then a company's act to business will be outside India. So let's understand which all are the conditions that we have to understand. So under that, right, company's passive income should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of total income. So what is this point number one? This point number one is to determine a company's active business whether it is outside India or not. If active business is outside India, then POEM determination has a separate step. If active business is not outside India, then POEM is determined in a different manner. First, let's understand how to determine active business. Then we will discuss how to determine POEM. So, active business outside India. For determining whether a company's active business is outside India, a company needs to satisfy all the conditions which we are about to discuss. Under that, condition number one says a company's passive income should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of the total income. What do you mean by passive income? A company has two types of income, active income and passive income. Now you tell me what will be passive income? You are actually passive in class. You are not active in class. Rent received, interest received, we can say income other than direct operating income is said to be passive income. Active income means your direct operational income. Passive income means other income rather than your operational income. Are you all listening? So, passive income has a definition in this particular CBDT circular. So, let us understand what is the definition for passive income. Under that passive income, passive income means, passive income means two things. Number one, income from, income from transactions where both purchase and sale are to or from associated entities. So what do you mean by this? Income from both purchase and sale are to or from associated entity means what friends? Listen, listen. I will give you an example for a better understanding over this particular point. Listen. Say for example, there is a company called JK Limited. Alright. What JK Limited is doing? J JK Limited has an associated entity called AE1. And they have another associated entity called AE2. What do you mean by associated entity? A company under common control. Are you all with me? Say for example, Tata group of companies have many subsidiary companies under that. Although subsidiary company and the parent company can be called as an associated entity, common control, common management, common capital involvement, etc. AE1 and AE2 are two associated entities of JK Limited. JK Limited, what he does is, JK Limited buys goods from AE1 and sells goods to AE2. Alright? JK Limited buys goods from AE1 and sells goods to AE2 and they are making a profit. Say 10,000 crores is the profit made by JK Limited by doing this activity. Anyways, A1, JK Limited, and A2 all are under one single control. Yes or no? All are same constituent entities or all are associated entities. This A1 can directly sell products to A2. They don't require JK in between. Yes or no? If JK is buying goods from associated entity and selling goods to associated entity, thereby making a profit, that profit is said to be a passive income. Department says you are not actively engaging in any activity. You are only buying goods from your associated entity and selling goods to your own associated entity. You are not actively doing any business activity. This is what income tax department says. So if you are making some income and the income is on account of purchasing goods from your associated entity and selling goods to your associated entity, all those incomes shall be always treated as what? passive income because department says it is not your active income because you are acting in between your associated entities that is actually not required they can directly trade the products they don't require a jk same associated entity to be in between are you all with me so the first point under passive income it says if you have an income from transactions where both purchase and sale is to or from associated entity, that shall be always a passive income. Now, passive income is not over. There is one more 
uh, item under passive income. It says income by way of royalty. Income by way of royalty, dividend, capital gains, capital gains, rental income, and interest income. So, if a company have a royalty income, dividend income, capital gain income, rental income or interest income, those incomes are always categorized as passive income. And for this interest income, there is a small exception. Interest income except for, only this interest income have an exception, okay. Interest income except for banking company. Or public financial institutions. For banking company and public financial institutions, interest income is their active income. Yes or no? They give loans and they accept interest. At that interest is their major, major revenue income. Or that interest is their major source of revenue. That is their main operational activity. So, there is an exception for interest. If you are a banking company or a public financial institution like LIC or something, then interest income is not treated as a passive income. It will be treated as what? Active income for banking company and public financial institutions. Are you all here? All right. So, this is the definition for passive income. So, what is point number one? A company's passive income should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of total income. Then we can say condition number one is satisfied. And there are three more conditions. If all of the conditions if all the conditions are satisfied, then what is the conclusion? Active business outside India. Thereafter, we will decide or determine the company's place of effective management. Yes or no? First, we need to determine whether a company is active business outside India or not. After determination of ABOI, we will determine the place of effective management. Are you all with me? So, this is phase one, determination of active business. And we have a phase two, that is determination of place of effective management management. Let me complete phase one first. Now, moving on to condition number two. Condition number two, it says, companies assets located in India should be less than, there is no equal to for the condition number two. It should be less than 50 percentage of total assets of the company. But condition number 1, it says less than or equal to. Condition number 2 says assets located in India should be less than 50 percentage of total assets of the company. If that is satisfied, then we can say condition number 2, both the conditions are satisfied. Condition number 1 and 2 have to be satisfied. What do you mean by asset located in India? See, say you are a foreign company, all right? you have some connection in India. Then only we will check whether that foreign company's place of effective management, whether in India or not. Yes or no? For determining place of effective management of a foreign company, what is phase number one? You determine that company's active business. If the active business is outside India, then in most cases POEM also will be outside India because your major business is outside India then your control and management also will be outside India. What was POEM? The place where key management and commercial decisions are actually made. Yes or no? So, we determine this POEM if it is a foreign company only because Indian companies are always Indian residents. We don't need to determine POEM for an Indian company. Yes or no? Now, for determining active business, whether outside India, what is the first condition? passive income of that particular company should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of total income. That means majority of their income should be active income. Yes or no? What was condition number two? Your assets in India should be less than 50 percentage of total assets. What do you mean by that? Your majority asset should be outside India. If all the conditions are satisfied then active business is also outside India. Are you all with me? So that is condition number two. Let us understand what is condition number three. Condition number three, it says number of employees residents in India, number of employees residents in India 
or situated in India should be less than 50 percentage of total number of employees. Number of employees, residents in India or situated in India should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of total number of employees. So friends, what do you mean by this? Your majority employees should be outside India. Yes or no? If your majority employees are located in India or residents of India, then your place of management cannot be outside India. That means it is in India. But be very careful when you write an exam, don't write your active business is out, active business is in India. Because it's a technical term. You have to say whether your active business outside India or you have to say our active business is not outside India. Don't say active business in India. Are you all with me? This A, B, O, I is a technical term. You have to say whether A, B, O, I outside India or it is not outside India. Don't say active business is in India because it, you know, in examination, this will be like a hybrid question. You have to write some theory and there will be some percentages and numericals. So you have to use the technical terms when you write the theory in exams. Don't write uh, your own words. Don't make your own words. Okay. You have to write in the technical language only. Now, condition number four. Condition number four, it says payroll expenses. For above employees in India should be less than 50 percentage of total payroll expenses. And condition number four says payroll expenses for those employees who situated in India or residents in India should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of the total payroll expenses. All right. So if all the four, four conditions are satisfied, then we can say the active business is outside India. What do you mean by the fourth condition, friends? If the persons who are getting majority salaries is in India, then your business decisions are major business is in India. That's what they are saying. Say, for example, your company have 10 employees. All right. Eight employees are outside India. Only two employees situated in India. Are you all with me? But that two employees is earn, getting that majority salary. Say the two employees is CFO and the managing director. Then they will get the majority salary compared to your total payroll. Then the department will not say your active business outside India. That's what the fourth point is. Your majority payroll expenses also should be outside India. That's what I'm saying. Payroll expenses for those employees who are situated in India should be less than 50 percentage of your total payroll expenses. Are you all with me? After finishing of this complete theory, I'll give you small, small examples for a better conceptual clarity. So, if all the four conditions are satisfied, then what is the conclusion? If all the four conditions are satisfied, then what is the conclusion? Act to business is outside India. That's what our conclusion is all about. Yes or no? Now, let's continue our writings. So, act to business outside India if the answer is yes. What do you mean by answer is yes? All the fall condition, if got satisfied, then your active business is outside India. Then how do we determine POEM? That's what we are about to write. So please write, if active business is outside India, then POEM shall be, POEM shall be outside India. outside India if majority board of directors meeting majority board of directors meeting are held outside India are held outside India again friends let me remind you this is only a guideline what the guidelines say, 
your active business is outside India and your majority board of directors meeting are also outside India, then your place of after management is also outside India. Now, under that, we can write one more thing. Why this majority board meetings have an importance in determining POEM? Because board meetings are done by, are actually held by board of directors. The board of directors take the key managerial and commercial decisions in the company. Yes or no? They took decisions by way of holding meetings. They pass a board resolution. So, if majority board meetings are done outside India, that means majority or pivotal decision makings are actually held outside India. Yes or no? And hence, departments say place sector management is also outside India. And you have to be very careful. Say majority board meetings are in Singapore. We are not supposed to say place of sector management is in Singapore. We must say place of sector management is outside India because we cannot determine Singapore's thing in Income Tax Act. We can only say POEM is ours or outside India. Never write a country's name. Are you all with me? Say majority board meetings are in UK. You are not supposed to write POEM is in UK. It is like Indian government is giving something to UK. Hey, UK government, come here. You take the POEM. Can we say things like that? No. We can say our things. We can take the POEM or we can leave it. That's it. Don't, don't say that UK POEM is in your country. You take it. That's not possible. All right. Now, and under that, let's write a note. If board of directors are not exercising, if board of directors are not exercising their powers their powers if board of directors are not exercising their powers and the same and the same and the same is and the same is exercised and the same is exercised by and the same is exercised by a person resident in India. Then POEM shall be in India. Then POEM shall be in India. What do you mean by this, friends? Say the board of directors are dummy board of directors. What do you mean by dummy board of directors? In papers, majority board meetings are outside India. But the board meeting, the directors just come in and they say hi, they have some biscuit, they have some snacks, they have some tea, then they say bye-bye. The actual decisions are taken by some other person who is an Indian resident. Are you all with me? In that case, department will say, your board of directors are dummy board of directors. So, number of board meetings doesn't matter. Your actual decisions are taken by a person who is an Indian resident. So, you also shall be an Indian resident by way of place of effective management. Are you all here? I will give you an example with some practicality. All right. So, listen. Say for example, Reliance India Limited. Say Reliance India Limited, you all know it's an Indian company. Say they want to expand their business in Mauritius. In Mauritius. So initially, they have a plan to open a branch in Mauritius. They are actually planning to open a branch in Mauritius. So what is the highlight of Mauritius? Have you heard about that country, Mauritius? It's actually very famous. For what? It's a tax haven. What do you mean by tax haven? The rate of tax is 0%. They don't charge any income tax from their residents. Are you all listening? So, Reliance is actually planning to open a branch in Mauritius. What is the advantage in opening a branch, friends? What is the advantage in opening a branch? Branch means an extension of their head office. So, whatever, all the decisions will be taken by the Reliance Industries Limited and it is only an extended arm extended operations yes or no if they open a branch then that branch will be completely under the control of this in reliance industries limited which is in india but there is a problem this reliance industries limited is actually an indian resident being an indian company it's an indian resident yes or no are you all listening being an indian company it's an indian resident so if they open a branch in mauritius 
all the profits earned by that branch also will be taxable in India. Yes or no? Due to residence rule, all the profits earned by that particular branch in Mauritius will be automatically taxable in India due to that residence rule. So, what Reliance planned is, Reliance instead of opening a branch, they incorporated a subsidiary company. They incorporated a subsidiary company in Mauritius. They incorporated a subsidiary company in Mauritius. This company's all assets, all employees, everything is in Mauritius. Say this company's all assets, all employees, everything is in Mauritius. They incorporated a separate company and this Reliance holds 100% shares of this particular company in Mauritius. All right. Now, this company's all the board of directors meeting are also in Mauritius. This company holds all the board of directors meeting in Mauritius. But the board of directors, before taking a decision, have to get an approval from Reliance Industries Limited. Say, the board of directors are holding a meeting. They are taking decisions, but they, are, they cannot take decisions by their own. What they need to do? They need to submit their recommendations to Reliance Industries Limited. If it is so, then income tax department will say that, see, we have agreed that you have incorporated a company in Mauritius. It's a separate legal entity in Mauritius. Being a Mauritius company, you cannot, we cannot say that you are an Indian resident. But what happens is, your board of directors are a dummy board of directors. Why? They, can, they don't have a unanimous or they don't have a Xiomoto power to take decisions by their own. They need to submit their recommendations to the Reliance Industries in India. And hence, your decisions are actually made by an Indian resident. Yes or no? So, what Reliance did? Instead of opening a branch, they incorporated a company over there. And the Reliance enjoys complete control over that particular subsidiary company. And hence, department will say, this company's POEM is in India. And ultimately, this company's entire profit, income tax department, can levy or can demand taxes. Yes or no? So, Reliance incorporated a company only for the purpose of tax saving. Then they retain the control over that particular company. Yes or no? And department comes up with the POEM concept and department says, yes, it's a separate company, we agreed that. But that company's POEM is in India because Reliance Industries Limited takes the decisions. And hence that company is supposed to pay taxes in India. So this POEM concept is another anti-avoidance measure. Why it is an anti-avoidance measure? To take tax advantage only, Reliance Incorporate, sorry, Reliance Incorporated a subsidiary company in Mauritius. Yes or no? And they retain the control over that particular company. So that Reliance will lose nothing. Instead of opening a branch, they can simply incorporate a company and they can retain the power. If they do so, it is only for the purpose of saving taxes you incorporated a company over there. Yes or no? And hence, department will say that company is an Indian resident due to POEM. Are you all with me? Have you understood the logic behind this POEM? If Indian companies do things like this, the department will say that those companies which you incorporated under you also shall be an Indian resident due to POEM concept. This is an important concept both for CMA final and CA final. They have asked questions from this, 5 mark question. Same question for CMA final and CA final. Exactly same question. So, we haven't completed it. We have written only one side of it. Now, what if the answer is no? That means, your active business is not outside India. That means what, friends? Your active business is not outside India means what? Technically saying, it is in India. Then, POEM shall be determined in two stages. POEM shall be determined. POEM shall be determined after considering the following. After considering the following, number one, number one, identify, identify persons who 
actually make key management and commercial decisions commercial decisions and step number 2 determine determine the place where these decisions these decisions are in fact made these decisions are in fact made this hide has a problem they are not clearly stating how to determine POEM yes or no what they say if your active business is not outside India then POEM shall be determined after considering two things which one are the two things that you have to consider number one you go and identify the person who takes the actual decision number two you go and determine the place where the decisions are in fact made but they are not saying how to precisely determine POEM yes or no this is the exact wordings of that particular severity circular then how do you determine uh, POEM the POEM is determined having uh, by giving importance to the actual facts of a particular case what do you mean by actual facts of a particular case you go and identify the decision makers and you go and identify the place where the decisions are actually made based on these two factors department have a discretionary power to determine POEM there is no universal formula for determining POEM if the active business is not outside India are you all with me in the starting itself I've told you this is only a guideline principle what do you mean by a guideline principle in certain scenarios this principle will help you to determine POEM this guideline is not to determine POEM in all permutation and combination you cannot determine POEM in all permutation and combination by making use of this guideline this will help in certain circumstance are you all with me POEM determination is actually discretionary power of department first of all if you think your key management and commercial decisions are made in India you yourself have to declare that you are an Indian resident but nobody will do that why if you declare yourself as an Indian resident you tell me what is the consequence according to residence you rule you are supposed to pay taxes in India yes or no so nobody will declare that they are Indian resident yes or no in that scenario department will come and having regard to actual facts and figures they will determine whether pace of actual management is in India or not so they have a discretionary power in determination of POEM while exercising that power this guideline will support them this guideline is not an exhaustive equation to determine POEM in all circumstances this is only a helping tool to determine POEM in certain scenarios are you all with me but in examination you need to only what study this particular severity circular all right I'll tell you how they ask it the examination questions now there are a few things we have to discuss before that let's solve some examples for a better concept of clarity let's solve some examples so I want all of you to go through this example and you need to say whether active business is outside India or not. Determine ABOI, whether active business is outside India or not. So, ACO is a sourcing entity for an Indian multinational group incorporated in US. So, we will draw a flowchart by making use of this information. So, there is a company called ACO, which is in USA. Now, what they are saying is and is 100% subsidiary of an Indian company Bico. So, ACO is actually a subsidiary company and the holding company is said to be Bico. Yes or no? And this Bico is an Indian company. Now, there is a company called Bico which is in India and they holds 100% subsidiary. This ACO is the 100% subsidiary company of Bico. Now, listen, what they say is, the warehouses 
and stock in them are the only assets of the company. So, ACOS only assets means warehouse and stock in trade. And stock in trade and it is located in where? It is located in USA. That is what they say. And it is located in USA. Now, all the employees of the company are also in USA. So, all the employees of the company are also in USA. Now, they have given income wise breakup. They have given the average income wise breakup of the company's total income for 3 years is given. What is the logic behind this 3 years? I will tell you later. Are you all with me? For the time being, just forget about this 3 years point. Just for the time being, this is the average income wise breakup that they have given to you. Now, let us go through that breakup. 30 percentage of income is from transactions where purchases are from parties which are non-associated enterprise and sold to associated enterprise. So, they have a lot of activity. Out of this activity, their income wise breakup percentage is given in the question. Yes or no? From that percentage, let us understand how much percentage is the passive income. Are you all with me? So, tell me, point number 1 says, out of their total income, 30 percentage of income is from purchase non a and sold to A. Can you call that 30 percentage as a passive income? Yes or no? The answer is no. You cannot call that 30 percentage as passive income. Why? For calling an income as passive income, both the purchase and sale is to or from associated entity. Yes or no? Here, the purchase is from a non A and you sold it to a, that does not make it as a passive income. So, it is not a passive income. Number 2, 30 percentage of income from transactions where purchases are from associated enterprise and sold to associated enterprise. Can you call it as passive income? Yes. Why? Both the purchase and sale is to or from associated entity and hence this will be a passive income. I will call it as PI, passive income. Then third one, 30 percentage of income is from transactions where Purchases are from A and sold to non A. Passive income or not? Not passive income because sold to non A. 10 percentage of income is by way of interest income. Since the question says if they have some warehouse in stock, then it is not a bank and a public financial institution. And this is also passive income. Yes or no? So, how much percentage is their passive income? The total income breakup is given. Out of that breakup, only 40 percentage is passive income. Yes or no? Now, let us determine POEM. What is the first condition for determining POEM? That company's passive income should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of total income. And according to what we have understood, only 40 percentage of total income is passive income. Yes or no? Out of their total income, only 40 percentage is passive income. First condition is satisfied. Yes or no? What is second condition? Assets liquidated in India should be less than 50 percentage. All the assets are in USA. So, second condition is also what? Satisfied. Because all the assets are in low USA. That means asset located in India is 0 percent. 0 is less than 50. And hence second condition is also satisfied. And what about third condition? All the number of employees should, in India should be less than 50 percentage of total employees. All the employees are in USA. So, how, what is the percentage of employees in India? 0 percent, less than 50. Yes or no? So, third condition is also satisfied. Then, what about fourth condition? If all the employees are in USA, 100 percentage of the payroll expenses is in USA. And payroll expenses in India will be 0 percent. So, fourth condition is also satisfied. And what should be the verdict? Active business is outside India. That should be your verdict. The example does not demand you to compute what POEM because we do not have adequate information to determine POEM. Our only objective is to determine active business whether in India or outside India. So, the first conclusion is ABOI is outside ABOI that means active business outside India. Are you all with me? Read example 2. Other facts remain the same as in example 1. So, this is an extension of example 1 with a variation that ACO has total 50 employees, 47 employees managing the warehouse, storekeeping and accounts of the company are located in USA. 
managing director ceo and sales head are residents in india the total annual payroll expenditure on 50 employees is 5 crore annual payroll expenditure in respect of md ceo and sales head is 3 crore so all the informations are same as that in example 1 so example 1 the conclusion was passive income is less than 50 percentage of total income yes or no passive income less than 50 percentage of total income that we have already proved and what was the second verdict in example 2 warehouses and stock in trade are the only assets and those are located in us same in example 2 yes or no so indian assets less than 50 percentage of total assets that is also satisfied condition number three there are certain differences what are the difference they say they have 50 employees they have 50 employees 47 in us and only three in india yes or no so 47 employees are in us so 47 employees us only three in india means number of percentage of employees in india is 3 by 50 that is only six percentage of total employees is in India. So, condition number 3 is also satisfied. Only 6 percentage is in India. And what about condition number 4? They say the total payroll expense is 5 crore. Total payroll expense is 5 crore. Out of that 5 crore, 3 crore is earned by that managing director, CEO and sales head. Both 3 of them are in India. So, you tell me what is the percentage of payroll expenses to those employees in India? 3 by 5 that is 60 percentage of total payroll expenses is earned by Indian residents yes or no 60 percentage of the total payroll expenses are given to Indian residents and fourth condition is not satisfied we cannot say that fourth condition is satisfied it is failed and hence we can say active business not outside India all the following conditions have to be satisfied for stating that for concluding that active business is outside India here the fourth condition is getting failed and hence active business is not outside India go to example 3 basic facts are same in example 1 so it is a con extension of example 1 Further facts are that all directors of ACO are Indian residents. During the relevant PY, five meetings of board of directors are held, out of which two in India, three outside India, with two in country X and one in country Y. Example 1, what was the conclusion? Active business outside India. Yes or no? So, example 1, we have concluded that ABOI satisfied. If ABOI satisfied, and majority board meetings are also outside India, then what is the final conclusion? Place of the management is also outside India. Yes or no? But here there is a problem. In India, two board meetings were held. In country X, two board meetings were held. Country Y, one board meeting held. So, it is a tie between India and country X. Yes or no? So, active business is in India. Sorry, POEM in India or outside India? Don't look in that manner. Out of five, only two in India, three outside India. Out of that, two in country X and one in country Y. But the majority board meetings are outside India. Yes or no? And hence we can conclude that POEM is also outside India. We are not saying it is in country X, we are not saying it is in country Y. POEM, it is not ours. We are not taking the POEM advantage here. Why? Because out of five, three were outside India, only two in India. ABOI, if the ABOI test is satisfied, then majority board of directors meetings are also outside India, then don't even check anything else. We can simply conclude that place sector management is also outside India. Example 4. See, the facts are same in example 3. What was example 3? Majority board of directors meeting was held outside India, but it is established by AO that although ECO senior management team signs all contracts for contracts for all contracts which is about 10 lakh, ECO must submit its recommendation to BCO. 
So if a contract's value is more than 10 lakh, then ACO must submit its recommendation to BCO. They have to get approval from BCO. Who was BCO? That Indian holding company. Yes or no? Now, BCO makes decision whether or not the contract may be accepted. So BCO is the ultimate deciding authority if the value of contract is more than 10 lakh. It is also seen that during the PY, more than 99% of the contracts are about 10 lakh. And over past years also, the same trend in respect of value contribution of contracts above 10 lakh is seen. For the past years also, majority contracts are above 10 lakh. That simply means what? Board of Directors of ACO are dummy because actual decisions are actually made by BCO because ACO have to submit a recommendation to BCO. Yes or no? And you tell me, even though the majority board meeting is held outside India, here the actual decision maker is an Indian company and hence POEM of ACO should be in India. You got my point or not? In that case also, department will say POEM of that particular company is in India. Then example 5. It's an independent example. An Indian multinational group has a local holding company, ACO in USA. And ACO also has 100% downstream subsidiaries, BCO, CCO in USA and DCO in India. What do you mean by downstream subsidiaries? Under ACO. ACO is a subsidiary company. Under ACO, there are a few more subsidiary companies that is B, C and D. Yes or no? Yes or no? Oh my God, please respond guys. So, ACO is there. Under that, there are three subsidiary companies, B, C and D. B and C in USA and D is in Canada. Now, let's continue the example. Then what are they saying? ACO has only income by way of dividend and interest from investments made in its subsidiary. So, ACO only has passive income and the place of effective management of ACO is in India. So, POEM of, of ACO is already determined. It's in India. Now, what they are saying is, um, the subsidiaries BCD are engaged in active business outside India. For B, C and D, their active businesses is outside India. Then, finally, the board of directors of B, C and D are held, board of directors meeting are held in USA and Canada respectively. So, they are also saying borrow directors meeting of B, C and D are in USA and Canada respectively. Board of directors meeting as well as ABOI satisfied and borrow directors meeting held outside India. Then act POEM is also outside India. It is irrelevant that they are its holding company is an Indian company or their place of management is in India. Doesn't matter. ABOI is outside and your majority board meetings are also held outside. Then you will be treated as a, then you will be treated as your POEM should be outside India. But again, if you try to take advantage of these provisions, if you artificially make some arrangement, thereby you are abusing these provisions then the department will bring in GAAR. It is said to be General Anti-Avoidance Rule. What is General Anti-Avoidance Rule? It simply means you are entering into an arrangement or an agreement so that you can take a tax advantage. If department came to know about this, if the department while checking the genuinity of the arrangement, if they think that the arrangement is only for the purpose of taking advantage in taxation, then Department will disregard that arrangement and they will tax you accordingly. Just like I said, only for the purpose of holding board meeting, they are traveling outside India. Thereafter, they are coming back to India. In that sense, department will definitely ask you, why are you holding your board meeting outside India? What is the purpose of that? If you don't have a proper answer, then department will say your POEM is in India, not for examination, only for practicality. Are you with me? Examination, they will never bring in this GAAR in between. Because if they bring in GAAR, then it itself will be a great confusion. 
because there is no it's an open ended area what do you mean by open ended area it is very difficult to determine commercial purpose or genuinity of a particular activity the company will always say this is the genuine purpose department will say it is not genuine what is genuine and what is not genuine not defined in income tax it is totally discretionary power of department and hence in examination that much level they will never ask and one more thing i i should share with you listen say for example I have given you an example earlier that is Reliance and their branch in Mauritius. Say this Reliance industry has a laid down procedure. Laid down procedure especially uh, in the area of say for example payroll functions. Payroll functions, accounting functions, HR functions. IT infrastructure related thing, then platforms, supply chain function, then banking procedures, etc. What do you mean by lay down procedure? All the companies under Reliance Industries Limited have to mandatorily follow these standards. It is just like KFC. Every franchisee have that red color. They have a standardized furniture. They have a standardized billing procedure. Yes or no? Their employees, most of them wear the same uniform. Their customs is same. So that way, in whatever, in wherever you visit, there will be uniformity for all the KFCs. Likewise, if the holding company has set certain laid down procedures in relation to payroll, accounting, HR, IT, network platform, supply chain, banking, etc., and all the subsidiary company follows this procedure. That doesn't mean holding companies taking decisions in that particular companies. This is permissible. The holding company can definitely lay down this kind of standard things. That is permissible. That doesn't mean board of directors of subsidiary companies are dummy. That doesn't mean board of directors of subsidiary companies are dummy. Because this is very common. Everybody follows this. This is also accept accepted by income tax department. Are you all with me? Holding company has some laid down procedure in these fields doesn't mean they are actively involved in decision making of subsidiary company this is permissible these are only laid down standard operational procedures i hope you got my point now now there is a small severity circular in relation to this particular guideline listen what they say is, listen friends, CBDT has clarified that POEM guidelines shall not apply to a company having turnover or gross receipts of 50 crore or less in a financial year. What do you mean by this? If you are a foreign company having a turnover of less than or equal to 50 crore, then this particular guideline is not applicable for you. You don't need to worry about this particular guideline. This guideline is only applicable for company having a turnover more than 50 crore in a financial year. Are you all with me? Now let me go back to the logic again. For a better, because this is an important area for both our CA and CMA final syllabus. Listen, listen. A final summary on this POEM concept. Listen. Basically, what is the objective of POEM friends? Tell me. You are a foreign company, but your actual decision making is happening from India. Then you will be treated as an Indian resident irrespective of your place of incorporation yes or no for that the first thing that you need to check is whether a company's active business is outside india or not active business is said to be outside india if four conditions are satisfied out of that first condition is passive income should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of total income the condition is passive income should be less than or equal to 50 percentage of total income they never say passive income from India but for all other assets in India number of employees in India then uh, payroll expenses for employees in India yes or no but for passive income only they are not saying passive income in India they only say passive income should be less than or equal to 50 percent of total income why how do we know sir you only told us passive income is less than or equal to 50 percent of total income why there is nothing called in India 
because for earning passive income geographical location is irrelevant you can earn passive income from india you can earn passive income outside india geographical location is irrelevant for earning passive income it's only an investment income yes, so you have a property overseas you will get rent you don't have to be there your company shouldn't have to be there for earning that rental income are you all with me so for passive income this territorial nexus has nothing to do that's why they say how much you have passive income if it is less than 50 percentage less than or equal to 50 percentage then active business is outside india then what is second condition assets in india less than 50 percentage third condition number of employees in india less than 50 percentage fourth condition their payroll expenses should be less than 50 percentage if all these conditions are satisfied a b o i active business outside india then starts the guideline a b o i plus majority board meetings outside then what what is the conclusion p o m also also p o m is also outside india provided it's a genuine case why because if you have made some artificial arrangement to take to exploit these provisions then they will disregard your arrangement that's what i've told you yes or no then the second thing they say if active businesses are not outside india then you need to determine poem based on two factors which are the factors you identify the decision makers then you identify the place where actual decisions are made based on these two factors department have a authority they have a discretionary power to determine p o e m yes or no moving on there are a few clarifications regarding p o e m again how do we find out income for a b o i test from where did we because it's a foreign company how do we determine income for the a b o i test don't write only listen all right so it says computed as per domestic tax law of company's country of incorporation see if a company is an indian company then income means income as per income tax records yes or no income as per your books of accounts which is reported to income tax department is the income but since it is a foreign company how do you determine income how do you determine income are you require passive income and total income right how do we determine passive income and total income for that you require income total income of company how do you compute total income of company you go to that company's country of incorporation and take income from their books of accounts which is reported as per their domestic tax law that's what they're saying computed as per domestic tax law of that particular country sorry company's country of incorporation what if that country does not levy taxes as per their normal books of accounts if that part say for example that company in mauritius in mauritius there is no domestic tax law yes or no so we don't have a books of accounts as per the domestic tax law over there so what we can do is there will be some books of accounts for that company yes or no you go refer the income from that books of accounts if domestic tax law is not there in the country of incorporation you go find their books of accounts find their total income from their normal books of accounts and that total income is the total income for computing passive income and other percentages are you all with me institute can easily ask some mcq questions from this but they haven't asked they haven't asked that means they will never ask that doesn't mean they will never ask okay they may ask in the next attempt now then how do you determine value of assets for aboi what was the second condition for determining aboi assets located in india should be less than 50 percentage of total assets yes or no then how do you determine the value of assets for that in the case of depreciable assets then average wdb value as per domestic tax law of country of incorporation what do you mean by average wdb value you take the opening and closing and average it that means opening plus closing divided by two then in case of other assets value as per books of accounts that simply means you take the book value say for example debtors creditors creditors is not an asset sorry debtors bills receivables etc you take the book value that's it how do you count the number of employees for aboi so average number of employees why because there will be an employer turnover sorry employee turnover in a company what do you mean by employee turnover 
company will come and sorry employees will come and go like that according to their wish yes or no so how do you determine the number of employees for that department say average number of employees that means you take the number of employees in the beginning and closing of a year then you average it which includes contract employees whom are providing same service as that of their permanent employees this is important once they have asked this as an adjustment in POEM determination question say for example if you are a contractual employee then that employee is not regarded as company's employees yes or no so friends number of employees how do you count the number of employees that we have already said you take the average number of employees but while counting number of employees what do you mean by employee is an official employee right but contractual employee means what temporary employees but if the company's contractual employee is doing the same service as that of your permanent employees they also have to be counted as your number of employees are you with me to manipulate the count certain companies will arrange will enter some contractual arrangement so if you have appointed some contractual employees and that contractual employees is doing the same service as that of your permanent employees then you have to consider the contractual employees also as your permanent employees and you have to consider them also while counting the number of employees i hope it is clear it is important now moving on how do you find out payroll easy payroll includes cost of salary wages bonus and all other employee compensation including related pension social cost borne by the employer that means cost to the company we'll say ctc whatever cost incurred by a company to maintain a particular employee can be treated as a payroll expenditure then for verifying aboi data to be used it say average of current year and two prior year should be used ah uh, what do you mean by that three years average based on the three years average value determine aboi say one year number of employees increased doesn't matter for the past years if there is a trend like this then only department will come with aboi and department will come with a poem so always practically they take average three years data for checking a b o i they will never conclude with a single year data if it has been in practice over a period then department will say your active business is outside india or not then department will come with a p o e m that's why there is an assumption in the last example average three year data breakup is given hope you remember and i've told you to forget at that time are you all with me and in case company has been in existence for a shorter period then the data of such period may be considered say companies this is the first year of incorporation you don't have any past year data then department will go with the first year only now year to be considered we are accounting year for tax purposes in accordance with the law of incorporation of company is different from the previous year then data of accounting year that ends during the relevant py and two accounting year preceding it shall be considered what do you mean by this say the country of incorporation say the mauritius company mauritius follows calendar year and india follows accounting year what to do then how to take the data you reconvert that calendar year into our pyay then you take the data are you all with me if the country of incorporation follows a different accounting year then first you need to redraw redraft the data according to our financial year concept then you compare it for the purpose of determining poem 